Hi everybody, I'm Abby with OC Habitats. Welcome back to our video series on the habitats of Orange County. Today I'm here in Little Corona and we are going to be talking about the tide pools. The tide pools are one of the most diverse and fragile habitats in the biological world. The tide pools in Orange County include Little Corona, Treasure Island, Gough Island, Heisler Park, Dana Point, Crescent Beach, and Crystal Cove. The tide pools are located on the rocky shore in an area called the intertidal zone. This habitat is dynamic in that it is exposed to both water and air due to the ebb and flow of the tides. On the west coast, we have a mixed semi-diurnal tide system, meaning we experience two high and two low tides of varying size every lunar day, which is the period of time it takes for the moon to complete one full rotation. The species that inhabit this ecosystem must be adapted to endure this very specific and harsh environment. Each one has evolved its own strategy for surviving the tide pool's many unique challenges, including wave energy, alternating high and low tides, sunlight, and the specific resources available. When visiting the tide pools, you are bound to come across many different types of algae, including red, green, and brown algae, as well as seagrasses. One specific type of algae that you will find in tide pools is rockweed. Rockweed is a brown algae that is all over our local tide pools. This species provides shelter for other species, protecting them from drying out in the hot sun, also known as desiccation. It also helps to restore the ocean's pH from rising CO2 levels, and it is a source of food for many species, including isopods and limpets. However, most other species cannot digest rockweed because it contains chemicals called phenols, which activate digestive enzymes in many animals that make it indigestible. This is why this seaweed species is so common on our beaches. Be careful not to walk on the seaweed as its reproductive organs are at the tips of its branches and it can be easily damaged. There are over 2,000 species of sea star in the world. The bat star and the okra star are some of our Southern California locals. Okra stars are larger, with each of their five arms extending further out from the body. Okra stars are typically either orange or purple. But bat stars are generally smaller in size and have a web-like appearance between their arms. They can be seen in a wide variety of colors. Under each arm, sea stars have hundreds of tube feet which suction along the tides for feeding and moving. Sea stars are considered a keystone species, meaning their presence in the ecosystem plays a very important role. Sea stars eat many other species, including snails, barnacles, mussels, limpets, and sea urchins. The sea star's presence keeps the population of these smaller herbivores in check, and therefore prevents them from overpopulating and overgrazing the plant life in the tides. In 2013 and 2014, sea stars along the west coast suffered a severe decline in population due to the sea star wasting syndrome, a disease causing body fragmentation and death. Since the original outbreak, the population has improved but not fully recovered. Experts are still working to figure out the cause of the disease and how to eradicate it. Keeping an eye on our sea star's health is very important because when sea star populations decline, so does the biodiversity of the tide pools. If you're walking along the tide pools and you see something dark and squishy on the ground, be careful not to step on it because it might be a sea hare. The California sea hare can weigh up to 5 pounds, while the California black sea hare can weigh a whopping 30 pounds. They feed on algae, which determines their color. They lay their eggs in long strings that look almost like ramen noodles along the tide pools, so watch out for them. Their name sea hare was chosen because of the rhinophores on their heads that resemble rabbit ears or hare ears. Although it has no outer shell, the sea hare has an internal shell which protects its vital organs. Sea hares are hermaphrodites, meaning they possess both female and male sexual organs. They often reproduce in large groups during the spring and summer seasons. When feeling threatened, sea hares can release an ink from their opaline glands to impair the senses of predators. It's important not to touch or harass the sea hares because they will feel threatened and ink you. The tide pools also host a great variety of crustaceans. The California spiny lobster, not to be confused with the main lobster from the east coast, is a red crustacean that has antennas twice the length of its body. While the California spiny lobsters crawl forward, they actually swim backward as they flick their tail to deflect predators. They are omnivores and scavengers, meaning they feed opportunistically. 
Spiny lobsters grow by molting their exoskeletons and forming new ones. If you spot a lobster shell on the beach, don't worry. The animal is likely alive and well. This is just the molted carapace the lobster has left behind. If you're lucky, you may come across the two-spot octopus. They're around 18 inches long and only live between one and two years. They are fascinating and highly intelligent creatures, which can camouflage their color and their texture, making them stealthy hunters, feeding on various mollusks and crustaceans. Female octopuses are considered to be one of the most devout mothers in nature, as they hide and protect their eggs until they hatch, which results in starvation of the mother. They are mostly solitary species, however, when breeding, males will aggressively pursue females. After mating, males will only live a few more weeks before they also die of old age. Most tide pools are open to the public, but although they are fun to explore, human activity has put them at risk. The tide pools are threatened by human encroachment, urban runoff, and pollution such as microplastics, as well as visitors that just don't understand the importance of the habitat. Most Orange County tide pools are marine protected areas, which means they are protected by law. When visiting our precious tide pools, please do not alter the habitat by picking up anything or moving it around, as it may be damaging or stressful for our species. Imagine if somebody came into your home and reached their hand in and picked you up, removed things around. You sure wouldn't like that very much. To find out more about these protections, visit the Orange County Marine Protected Area Council website. And if you want to find out more about our tide pools, OC Habitats offers guided tours of Little Corona and the Crystal Cove MPA. Check our website or contact us to schedule a hike. Now that you've learned all that, let's test and see what you can remember with our quiz. Question number one. The tide pools are located in which zone? A, the intertidal zone. B, the supertidal zone. C, the coastal dunes. Or D, the beach zone. If you guessed A, intertidal zone, you are correct. The tide pools are located in the intertidal zone. Which of our tide pool species mothers stays with their young while nesting and doesn't eat, causing them to starve? Is it A, the two-spot octopus, B, the giant owl limpet, C, the California spiny lobster, or D, the bat star. If you guessed A, the two-spot octopus, you are correct. Last question, which of our tide pool species swims backwards and uses its tail to deflect predators? Is it A, the sea hare, B, the giant owl limpet, C, the California spiny lobster, or D, rock weed? If you guessed C, the California spiny lobster, you are correct. Thanks for watching. Have fun exploring the tides, but don't forget to be very careful around our precious tide pool species. You can visit our website at ochabitats.org or any of our social media on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at ochabitats. Like this video and subscribe for more Orange County Habitat videos. Thank you for watching.